horizontally. The stock members will bend like this. The bottom members cannot be cannot bend because it's it has support reactions. It has supports, it has restraints, so these bottom members won't bend. But the stock members would definitely bend. And how to stop this bending? Essentially, we provide certain kind of a system called the pressing system. Now, what is a pressing system essentially? For example, let us say that this is some kind of a some kind of a, I should say a structure built of four members. And I apply some kind of a load here. Then essentially, if there is no press, it will be very unstable, right? But if I provide some kind of a pressing system, that is, if I have certain kind of a diagonal member, right? Uh, the diagonal members being in the direction of the lateral force that we are applying, then essentially what I have is this structure after deformation will be somewhat like this, wherein this diagonal member will have tensional forces acting on it while this diagonal members will have some kind of a slacking force. Now if I apply some kind of a load uh, through this direction then what will ha essentially happen is that this diagonal member now, now it will deform like this. So this diagonal member will be under tension and this will be under some kind of a slacking force. So this is slack and this is some kind of a tension. So this is the whole concept of bracing. By providing a bracing system, what we do is essentially it has a twofold advantage. Number one, it can resist horizontal bending. Right, that is the top members wouldn't bend now. So if I can provide some sort of a bracing system, say a X bracing, then essentially this, this movement along this and this will essentially be restrained because of this bracing. Right. And another thing that it helps in is basically I, I will draw a fresh diagram to illustrate this. Uh, I'm rubbing this off now. This board is so small, it creates a problem. So, the thing is like this, that... Again, if I draw like this... So, if I apply some kind of a vertical load, right? So, essentially the structure will bend like this, right? From the concept of beam. So, this top cord members will essentially be under compression and this bottom cord members will be essentially under tension and as we know from the buckling theory that when a long slender member is in some sort of a comp is acted by some sort of a compressive force buckling is prevented if we can make the member shorter and to make the member shorter what we do is that provide some sort of a lateral bracing because this is now the effective length of the member, but if we can provide a lateral bracing like this, like this, like this, then essentially the member length get reduced. Then this is the member length, this is the member length, this is the member length. So by providing a lateral bracing system, what we essentially do is that number one, we can resist the horizontal bending in the horizontal plane. And number two, this top part members, which essentially has some sort of a compressive force, right? It will be able to take in compressive force, more compressive force and it will not buckle, right, because the effective length reduces effectively. So uh, this is the whole concept of bracing system or I should say a cross bracing system, right. And uh, this is I think all. So essentially a brief synopsis of this lecture is that uh, in a bridge kind of a truss, vehicles fly through the deck, right. The deck transfers the load to the strangers. The stringers transfer it to the flow beam. Now the flow beam is placed in such a manner that the load, if it transfers the load to the truss, it actually transfers it at the point, at the nodal points. And as we know, if we can transfer the load at the nodal points, and essentially if the truss is some kind of a pin connection, right, then essentially what we have is the truss, the, the internal force in the various members will be action. So this is what happens and we can say that they, we, we have modified the practical side in such a manner that this idealized assumption that we have taken for truss analysis holds true. Right. Another thing I would like to tell is that what is the advantage of a bracing system? For example, a cross bracing. Here, the cross bracing helps us in two ways. Number one, what it does is it prevents horizontal bending. Right. That is, the top cord members won't bend like this now because there is a lateral bracing system like this. 
Right. And number two, what it does is that it effectively increases the compressive force that the top cord members can take because buckling, as we know, is buckling uh, 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 a member will buckle more if it uh, if its effective length is higher. And essentially, by this pressing system, what we are doing is that we are making this effective length lower. And essentially, then the member can take in more compressive load. And these things we have learned in strength of material. So any confusion, please revert back to it. And uh, that is all for this lecture. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank you.